Neuschwanstein, Sans Souci, Heidelberg. How well do you know Germany's castles and palaces? Time to clear up the five biggest misconceptions surrounding these historic buildings that not even Germans know about. Which palace only became famous as a ruin? Which one's a fake knight's castle? And which one was conceived as an elegant garden hut? Stay tuned to find out. Misconception number one. Around the world, Neuschwanstein in Bavaria is considered the epitome of a medieval castle. But guess what? Hundreds of years ago, no valiant knight ever lived here. That's because Neuschwanstein is only about 150 years old. Construction started in 1869, when the Middle Ages were history. No knight ever lived here. Only one person did, Bavarian King Ludwig II, who had the castle built. He loved escaping into dream worlds, like the bygone Middle Ages. That's why he wanted his new castle in the Algoi Alps to resemble a knight's castle. It's done so well that Disneyland later even modelled its Cinderella castle on Neuschwanstein. Inside, you will encounter depictions of medieval legends. Building Neuschwanstein Castle cost vast sums of money, draining state coffers. Following Ludwig's death in 1886, visitors were, for the first time, allowed inside the castle to see what all the money had been spent on. They were mightily impressed. In short, even though Neuschwanstein is a fake medieval castle, nobody minds. With 1.4 million visitors every year, Neuschwanstein is Germany's most visited castle. Misconception number two. Everyone thinks Potsdam Sans Souci is a Rococo palace. But did you know it was conceived as a sort of garden house? A rather elegant one, sure, but still, Sans Souci was built from 1745 to 1747 according to the plans of Prussian King Friedrich II. First, he had vineyard terraces built and then a vineyard hut, as he called it, built at the top. It was only inhabitable during the summer months, as you'd expect from a garden hut. And it has only 12 rooms. Compare that with Potsdam's new palace, also built for Friedrich. That boasts over 300 rooms. Major festivities were held here with plenty of space to host guests. In contrast, Friedrich's vineyard hut served as a retreat. This is where he took a break from governing and representative duties and could be relaxed and carefree. Hence its French name, Sans Souci. Around it, he had a large park and garden laid out. In short, although Potsdam is home to grand, magnificent castles, it's this little vineyard house that fascinates visitors the most. 350,000 people visit it every year. Misconception number three. The ruins of Heidelberg Castle are world famous, but why wasn't it rebuilt? Because it would be too expensive or because it's supposed to commemorate the horrors of war? Neither is correct. Heidelberg Castle was destroyed by French troops in the 17th century, but the ruins haven't been left standing as an anti-war memorial. And rebuilding the structure would cost millions, but it's not because of money either. The old weathered remains have been kept as they are because they're so beautiful. We have the poets and painters of the Romantic period to thank for that. They were enchanted by the ruins' transient aura, spreading word of the beautiful remains all over the world. A small part of the castle was rebuilt in the 19th century, where you can marvel at the largest wooden wine barrel in the world. But the majority of the castle remains in ruins, because sometimes imperfection is what fascinates us most. To sum up, Heidelberg Castle is a place of longing for romantics from all over the world. Every year, around one million visitors come to see what is probably Germany's most beautiful ruin. 
Misconception number four. There are an unusually large number of castles along the Rhine. Why here? You're probably thinking many noblemen wanted to enjoy the great view of the river, right? Well, the Rhine Valley between Koblenz and Bingen is truly beautiful. There are 40 castles on a stretch of just 60 kilometers. But they were not built here because of the romantic views. It was, as so often, all about the money. The Rhine has always been an important traffic artery, with ships transporting goods up and down the river. That promised a steady flow of customs revenue. Everyone wanted to get hold of a piece of land on the river, secure it with a castle and start collecting customs duties. Castles were highly coveted and fought over. Around 1300, there was even a customs war on the Rhine. Castle lords didn't care for views. They were interested in ships and collecting customs. In short, we owe it to simple greed that there are so many castles along the River Rhine. Who cares, they were essentially built to serve as customs officers. UNESCO, by the way, has declared this beautiful stretch of the river a World Heritage Site. Misconception number five. There are more than 25,000 castles and palaces across Germany. Are all of them state-owned? After all, the monarchy was abolished over 100 years ago. It's true the German emperor and nobility lost power in 1918, and that since then many castles and palaces have been administered by foundations. But even so, many of these buildings are still privately owned. Take the example of Elts Castle in the Eiffel. Doesn't it look like a knight's castle from the Middle Ages? It's been in family ownership for 800 years. It is owned by Count Jakob von und zu Elts. Although he no longer lives here, he is responsible for maintaining the huge castle. Entrance fees help with that. During a tour, you'll learn a lot about life in a medieval castle. An entire family would, for example, sleep in this bed. Not because they were poor, but to keep each other warm. Heating such a huge castle was a real challenge. But Borg Aids had 40 fireplaces, an incredible luxury in those times. And also, the tapestries were not just for decoration, but to keep the thick castle walls from giving off cold. In short, whether privately or publicly owned, Germany's famous castles and palaces are absolutely worth seeing. Especially now you're familiar with some of the biggest misconceptions surrounding them.